welcome back to my channel today. I have a very interesting video for you guys today because this is my last day. My hair is going to be this long. I'm actually going to be getting a haircut very, very, very soon. And I might have posted pictures on Instagram already. Make sure to find me at Miss Tiffany Ma if you guys are curious as to what my new haircut looks like. But I'm actually really excited to tell you guys how you guys can have your hair grow out as long as mine is. My hair actually touches my butt. It's that long. I feel like Pocahontas slash Milan mixed in one sometimes. This video is pretty much everything I personally do to make my hair grow very long and fast. And I would say that my hair grows very, very fast. And maybe it's what I do to my hair or to my jeans, which I'm really lucky about. But honestly, these are pretty simple, easy tips and tricks that anybody can do to help your hair grow longer and faster. And it's crazy because I got a haircut, I want to say a year ago, and I got it cut about around my boob area. And from then, it has grown a good 8 inches. And I don't know if that's normal or what, it might have grown even longer than that. If you guys are really interested, make sure you guys stay tuned and give us a big fat thumbs up if you guys enjoyed this video or learned anything. And I would absolutely love it if we got this video to 2,000 thumbs up. I think that would just pretty much make my day. So let's go and do it. We can totally do it, Jesters. Let's, you know, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Let's just hit that thumbs up button just right there. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So my first tip on how to grow out your hair is really kind of gross to some people, but it's just not washing your hair every single day. I wash my hair every three days. I mentioned this in my morning routine video and I got a quite a few comments saying, doesn't your hair get greasy? And yes, it does get greasy when you first start doing this. It probably took me a good four months for my hair to finally get used to not being showered every three days. And what I like to do is just put my hair in a shower cap and wash my body with cold water because if I wash it with warm water, then my hair gets a little bit greasier. And then if I feel like my hair is getting too greasy, I like to put dry shampoo in it. I forgot to bring it out, but the one I like to use currently is the one by Suave. It's like $3. It's so inexpensive. I know other people use baby powder or cornstarch. Not washing your hair as often allows it to be less damaged, so I just don't like washing my hair as often. I don't think it's necessary. It's also healthier for your hair too because your natural oil can just nourish your own hair. So my second tip is when you actually finally do wash your hair, maybe that's every other day, maybe that's every three days, I like to actually massage my hair while I'm shampooing it. And I shampoo my hair very carefully. I don't, you know, lather it up all on top of my head. I only make sure that I put the shampoo where I need it, so only on my actual scalp. And when I do it, I like to put pressure on my scalp and just massage it really in small circular motions. And what that does is it invigorates my follicles, my hair follicles, I don't know. And I like doing that just because it feels so good. It makes me have less headaches and it just makes your hair follicles wanna grow longer and faster. And I really don't know the science behind it, but I like massaging my head while I'm taking a shower. While I'm on that subject of massaging your scalp, I think it's really necessary to take good care of your scalp. I think it prevents your hair from breaking if you have a healthy head versus healthy hair down here. So your base is your hair follicle and your hair follicle is attached to your scalp. So my favorite shampoos to use are shampoos that are specifically made for your scalp. So dandruff shampoo is really good at making sure that your scalp is healthy and you know a good environment for your hair to grow long. And the one I like to use is by Head & Shoulders. I know there are a ton of brands out there that are for dandruff, but the one I specifically like using is Head & Shoulders Citrus Fresh. I can only find this on Amazon. It's specifically made for oily hair. And I do have oily hair because I only shower my hair every three days. So this is the one I bought. But honestly, just find a shampoo that is meant to keep your scalp healthy, which mostly is like Selsun Blue, um, head and shoulders. I know Neutrogena also has a dandruff shampoo too. So my third, so my fourth tip, I believe, I think it's four now. My fourth tip is after you get out of the shower, make sure you towel dry your hair very carefully. Don't, you know, like go like this to your head when you're towel drying it because that puts tangles in your hair and you want to prevent tangles as much as possible. So when I actually towel dry my hair, I pretty much take my towel, so the, pretend this is my towel, on, and I just grunge my hair like this while running down it instead of, you know, just like towel drying it like crazy. 
and then I will just let it air dry or I'll use a wide tooth comb to take out the tangles but do not whatever you do do not brush your hair while it's wet that is one of the worst things you can do to your hair it causes breakage in your shaft it also causes split ends and you know what there are better ways to take out your tangles also along the lines of brushing your hair don't brush your hair as often maybe brush your hair at night and every morning but that trick that little old age tip of like brushing your head a hundred times a day is healthy for your hair. I don't brush my hair a hundred times a day or do a hundred strokes or whatever. I just brush it so it's necessary for my hair to be untangled. It has kept it so long and when your hair breaks, that just means that your hair is getting shorter and shorter versus getting longer and longer. Like I mentioned earlier, I like to air dry my hair and this goes along the lines of using as little heat tools as possible. So that means rinsing your hair with cold water. You know, actually rinsing your hair with cold water is really healthy for your scalp too. And it smooths out your hair and causes less frizzes. I don't know why I've been doing this for the last three years. I've rinsed my hair out with cold water even though I actually hate it. Now it wakes me up every time I do it in the morning, but when I first started doing it, oh man, like seriously, I just wanted to kill everyone. I just like, I, I had to run out of the shower. But at this point, I've gotten used to rinsing my hair with cold water and it's really good. It keeps my hair really shiny and less dull. So any type of heat dulls out your hair. So I like to air dry my hair. And I know that's harder for girls who have curly hair or like stick straight hair or things like that. But at some point, you have to commit to having long hair, and committing to long hair means using less heat styling products. And also, make sure you protect your hair when you are using heat styling products. But I try to keep my heat styling products to a minimum. And if I do want curls, then I'll go for curls that are heatless, so I'll just put my hair in a bun or a braid, or do that fancy thing I did when I was on my cruise. But if you have to actually use the hair dryer, make sure you put it on the cool setting. There's nothing worse than putting hot heat onto your scalp directly. It burns your scalp. On top of that, it makes your scalp greasier. I don't know if you've ever noticed that, but your scalp overcompensates for the drying effect of blow drying it or doing anything else to it by producing more oil than it's necessary. And just rock what your mama gave you. I just think it's one of the coolest things when people are comfortable rocking their natural hair. And sometimes I get comments saying, Tiffany, you need to do something with your dead hair. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm just rocking it today. I really like my natural, straightish, wavyish hair that looks kind of dead. I think it's okay because on those special occasions, I just feel much prettier when I actually try. Also, I like to deep condition my hair once a week. And my favorite product, and my, uh, my favorite product is actually the Macadamia Deep Repair Mask. I know it's been all over YouTube. I've actually used this since my freshman year of college, so two, three years now. And what I do is either I'll put it in my hair for about 20 minutes in the shower and then rinse it off, or I'll even sleep in it at night. What I'll do is I'll dampen my hair with water, put it in my ends, put it all over my scalp, and then put my hair in a plastic bag or a shower cap depending on what I'm feeling like at the moment and just sleep with it. My hair feels so soft and healthy afterwards. It also is a really great way to condition your hair. And after I take a shower, I also like to use oil treatments. And the one I like to use is a macadamia healing oil treatment. Sorry, I have a really hard time pronouncing words right now. This is what I like to use and I just put a half a pump of it in my hair and run it only down the bottoms of my hair. So no higher than this because my hair feels greasy if I put it any higher. And that's what I do and it's been working wonders for me ever since I've added deep repair masks into my routine. And a few times I have tried other deep repair masks like egg with honey and bananas. Um, and that is like a biatch to take out of my hair. So I only do it on occasions where I honestly just have nothing else better to do in my day. So the last thing I do isn't specifically meant for hair particularly, but it's just a lifestyle, which is eating healthy and drinking a lot of water. I think your hair gets really brittle if you don't eat a lot of protein and leaves and you know, just eat whatever your mama wanted you to eat as a child. So I love eating eggs. Eggs are one of my favorite proteins, one of my favorite meals. I eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner if I want, if I have time to make it. I really like protein and protein is pretty much 
what your hair is. But I also like to take supplements, and the supplements I've been taking recently are the biotin ones. They, these are like an off-brand, they're the ones by Target. I don't think you need to spend a ton of money on any type of vitamins or anything like that. And what it does is that it helps support healthy hair and skin. So it also helps with your nails, skin, hair, everything and anything in between. So you also don't need to buy a vitamin that's specifically with biotin in it. I know my favorite vitamins, which are the Little Critters Gummy Vitamins. I absolutely love these. I've loved this since I was a child. It also has bio biotin in it. It has... Um, a 20% daily value, which I mean isn't a ton, but it's still some biotin in here versus this one is 333%, which is a crap ton. That's pretty much all the tips I have for you guys on how I personally grew out my hair. I remember when I got my hair cut, I was literally crying because of how short it is. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sorry I kept touching my hair, but I felt like I had to touch my hair because this video was about hair. So I will see you guys in my next video. Okay guys, I need to stop being a weirdo. I'm really weird. Okay, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check me out on Instagram at Miss Tiffany Ma, and at Twitter at Miss Tiffany Ma, and at Snapchat at Miss Tiffany Ma. Okay, peace out. Love you.